I'm Mike Royer with an extended interview in this Health Matters Web Extra. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Health Matters. My name is Mike Royer. Don't tell other physicians, but Dr. James Reeves is one of our favorite guests on this segment and on this program. So we welcome you back. It's good to see you. A psychiatrist with University Medical Center here at the University of Alabama. And uh, you do have a, a ability of helping us understand complex issues in a kind of an everyday way of thinking. So thank you for that in the past and, and for today too. We're talking about anxiety. Um, are there people that have no anxiety in their lives at all or do we all deal with it at some point in some way? Well, thank you, Mike, for having me. It's good to be back. Yeah, I think anxiety is so common in, in the United States. I think we live in anxious times. It's hard not to have some type of anxiety. I'm always impressed with some people who have no anxiety because <laughs> those are the rare people, yeah. um, whether that be COVID that's going on or that you're worried about the Florida game with the Alabama playing mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. There are all sorts of things that can cause apprehension and uneasiness in life. And, uh, and it comes in all shapes and sizes. So it is, it, is, it is uncommon for someone not to experience some type of anxiety in their daily life. I've dealt with anxiety. I find I deal with it better as I get older. Does maturity help with that a bit in that I've seen this movie before, I've been anxious about this before, I kind of know how to deal with this particular kind. Is years of experience helpful in some ways? Absolutely, yes. I think you know when we're young, we're experiencing things for the first time yeah. and we're learning how to cope. And over time, our coping skills develop and you learn what works for you and what uh, doesn't work for you. And you, you work on that and you develop it and you perfect it over time. So I think there are some people who have problems with anxiety that do not go away um, with time. Some people have different types of traumas and things that they're experienced in their life. And those are the folks who may need to seek uh, help for that, who've learned and, and not been able to learn ways mm -hmm. to cope with certain types of stresses and that anxiety doesn't go away so easily. I've interviewed some world-class athletes that tell me the anxiety of the event actually motivates them, gets their adrenaline flowing or whatever it is and they run through a wall for their coach and all of that. Can it be used in a positive way? Yeah, anxiety is, is good. That apprehension, that uneasiness causes you to perform better. It raises your heart rate, it raises your attention level, increases your, your focus, and that can really you know, cause someone to perform at a much higher level than they normally do when they've got that back behind them. If you're too relaxed going into a big event or something important, that may affect you negatively. So it's good to have a little bit of anxiety, and that, that really increases performance, is when that anxiety becomes too much, that it overwhelms the person and then they can't think clearly, they can't function clearly, they're not acting their usual self and so forth, that's when it becomes a problem. Take us inside your office when someone comes to you and they're dealing with real life challenging anxiety issues. Where do you begin? I mean, it's easy for someone to go, oh, calm down, oh, don't worry about it, I know you don't do that. How do you begin to deal with people who deal with anxious challenges almost every day? Yeah, anxiety comes in all shapes and sizes. And when you think about anxiety, we kind of think about four or five different types of anxiety. So one type of anxiety we call is generalized anxiety. And that was you worry about so many things throughout the day and you can't seem to stop worrying about it. You can't relax, you can't stop worrying. It just becomes, and it could be simple things like I'm worried about my mother or I'm worried about the kids or yeah. I'm worried about my work. Yeah. And and uh, and that be, that is something that affects um, a, a fair amount of people all the time. The most common types of anxiety that we see though in the office are what we call social anxiety, and that is performance anxiety. So me speaking today is a bit of performance anxiety, sure. social anxiety, because you're not sure about how someone is gonna view you and how if they're gonna judge you improperly, or you know, you're at a party and someone's gonna think you're boring or something like that. That's a type of social anxiety, and that's probably about 15% of the population experiences pretty significant and sometimes disabling type of social anxiety where they refuse to go to parties or refuse to do things. The other type of anxiety, about 10% of the population, are anxieties about certain conditions. So if you're afraid of uh, spiders, that's arachnophobia. Mm -hmm. If you're afraid of heights, that's acrophobia. And so and that can affect people pretty significantly. They don't want to get into an elevator. They don't want to go outside in the backyard. And you know, that, that fear of what those specific things are, fear of a dog or something like that, can really cause problems in their life. And those can be debilitating 
to the point where you don't go out, you don't socialize, and then that begins to snowball affect all parts of your life, correct? Yeah, exactly. And there's something called agoraphobia, which is fear of being outside in public spaces. Oh. And so just worrying about whatever the issues are can prevent people from actually going out to their job and going out to the grocery store, doing simple types of things because, as you said, that anxiety starts to generalize. And then just being outside in an uncontrolled environment, that anxiety becomes so overwhelming, it just prevent, prevents them from doing the things that they need to do. And how sad for someone to work and have a career and maybe save a little money and want to travel but be afraid to get on an airplane. That would be such a shame. Absolutely. Can you yeah. talk folks through that with enough time and enough counseling? Yeah, a lot of these types of phobias, where there's fear of heights or fear of social uh, situations, you can actually get a help through a therapist. And there's something called exposure therapy where you give little miniature doses of that anxiety. So you're not speaking in front of 300 people, but you're gonna speak in front of three people. Yeah. And you're gonna slowly build up that ability to kind of work in social situations and feel comfortable. There's groups out there, Toastmasters General is, is a group that's out there to help people with public speaking. And, um, or you know, instead of you know, being exposed to a big tarantula spider, if you're afraid of spiders, look at a picture of a small little spider. That's your first step. And then you gradually build up and over time, you develop that fear starts to go away. You develop a tolerance to that. It's that you know, people, when they fear something, they want to run in the opposite direction. Yeah. But that's the worst thing you can do because that fear just starts to magnify. So you got to confront your fears, as the old saying goes, and overcome them. We may ask Scott to edit out my personal question here. If I go to a meeting where there's a thousand people, I want to be the speaker. Is that <laughs> concerning to you as well? <laughs> but it's just the opposite of the yeah. fear of it. I want to be the yeah. speaker. I, l I relish that challenge to see if I can make them laugh and be engaged with them. It, do, do I need counseling for that uh, desire that I like that so much? Oh, you're in the right profession then. <laughs> yeah, in, in the news Talking business. Too much. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's what we call extrovert, which yeah, is, yeah. Which is a, a great yeah. uh, uh, thing to have. It comes with have. some problems sometimes <laughs> too. Uh, you mentioned a therapist. What's the difference between you, a psychiatrist, and a therapist? Are they more specific on a specific challenge? Yes, sir. Yeah. So a therapist is does something called talk therapy. As we talked about walking through different types of phobias and exposures and how to manage that, a, a therapist will do that. Sometimes um, the therapy may not be fully effective or else someone says, I don't really want to deal with this with a therapist. I just want to take a medication. And if it's a, a medication route they want to take, then they'll come see a psychiatrist. And there are a number of medications out there which have been shown to be effective for relieving that anxiety. And uh, that's where I, I will come into play. What would you suggest to people who have loved ones they truly care about and they do have anxiety issues about something? Uh, don't dismiss it, I assume would be the most obvious thing, but what kind of support do you recommend and how do you go about recommending that they maybe seek out a professional that might help them? Yeah, a lot of people come to see us not because they want to come see us, but because their family members are concerned about yeah. them. You know, they're not going out and doing the things that they normally do. Or a lot of times with anxiety, it's manifested as irritability because that tension that builds up from the worry starts to come out in terms of arguments and not being the same person they used to be. And so I think it's important for, for people to realize that anxiety can, can manifest itself in a lot of different ways. And if you start noticing changes in your loved one's behavior, it's a point to point that out to them. You know, are you worried about something? Is there something concerning you? Uh, seems like things are different and being, uh, and hopefully they're able to confide in you and, and let you know what's going on and know that there are, are resources out there for that help, especially at the University of Alabama, where we have an employee assistance program where you can have six sessions with a therapist absolutely free as part of your benefit. There, it can become health damaging too if ignored and not treated. Is that accurate? Absolutely. It has all sorts of physical manifestations, that tension in your back and in your neck. Um, it can increase blood pressure, um, just that, that, that ability um, as physical symptoms and mental symptoms are so tied together in different ways. People who have chronic health conditions like chronic pain or whatever that may be, those symptoms tend to get worse as anxiety tends to build up. And as we get them treated and as they start to relax and not be so on edge about those things that they're worried about, you see those health conditions start to improve. You know, they say, my anxiety is a lot better. You know what? I'm not having the pain I was having before at the same time. My blood pressure is a lot better. So absolutely, um, it, treating anxiety, it, not just for the brain, but for the body as well. I think just about every time I've interviewed you, I've wanted to end with something like this, and that is seek help. People like you are available here at the university, but in towns all around the area. You can 
find through your medical society, through your personal doctor, psychiatrists who deal with these things every day. And don't be afraid because it's going to be kind of what this has been right here, a conversation, correct? Absolutely. There's a lot of great therapists out there um, that you can find through different resources, mm -hmm. as you said, and they would love to talk to you about what you're going through. You can op open up to them, explain to them exactly what you're thinking in a confidential manner, and they'll work with you to find the right solution, whether that's a therapy, whether that's the medication, or whatever that may be. And uh, I think you'll, you'll appreciate that and you'll end up feeling a lot better. So please, if that's something that you're struggling with, absolutely, there's a lot of resources out there for you. And like with so many other challenges, the worst thing you can do is nothing. Deal with it, get some help, and be healthier than you tomorrow than you are today, maybe. Absolutely. Dr. James Reeves, we think you're a, a great source of information. We appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today on Health Matters. Thank you very much. I appreciate that.